Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Robbins, and today we're going to talk about why so many churches are struggling with online church right now. Recent studies are showing that as we move deeper into the pandemic, many churches are really struggling to keep their online church services thriving. One study shows that right now only 50% of Christians are even still attending their church's online service. One third of Christians have moved to a different church's online service, and another third have just dropped out of online church altogether. Maybe you've had this kind of experience in your own church, right? When the pandemic began, things were really strong. Your Facebook and YouTube channels were growing. Your Easter services were really, really strong. But since then, your numbers have been falling like converts at a Benny Hinn service. Let the bodies hit the so what do you do? And why is it even happening? Well, over the next few minutes, I want to show you a few reasons why your church might be struggling and then some things you can do about it. But before we get into that, if you don't mind, please take a moment to go down below and click that subscribe button. And then while you're down there, go ahead and click that little bell next to it so you make sure to get notified each week when we put out a new video. Every week we put out new videos to help you to grow in your faith and help you grow your church. So here are a few reasons why your church might be struggling online. And the first one is that you're actually trying to do an in-person service online. And here's what I mean by that. When the pandemic started, so many of us wanted to get our church online as quickly as possible that we just took what we were doing in person and transposed it online. The worship order, the flow, the style, all of it, we just did it the exact same way, but we did it online. And in many ways, we actually thought that this was a way to comfort the people in our church, right? It helped it to feel familiar. Like even though they had to be at home, it was like being in church. But over time, what we've realized is that the transition just isn't that simple. There are some things about in-person worship that only work because they're in person. And so when those things don't work online, people leave. The second reason that you might be struggling is because your quality hasn't improved over time. In many of our churches, we assume that our people love us. And so we can make mistakes, we can have poor quality, but because they love us, we expect that they'll stick around. But the problem that we're finding is that they don't. Right? We all have those diehard people who would show up to our church while a volcano was erupting and spewing lava into the parking lot. But there are other people who just aren't that dedicated. It's the people that you don't hear from often, who could slip through the cracks and you wouldn't even know it. Or the new people who loved your vibe in person, but just aren't feeling it online. Or the parents who are trying to carve out just a few minutes to worship, but at the same time, they got kids screaming, asking for snacks, and a million other things to do. These are the people who are going to fall away if our services feel like they're just full of errors, thrown together, and aren't getting any better. A third reason that your online worship might be struggling is that things are just too long. And here's the thing. I'm not just talking about the sermon here. I mean, that's part of it, but I'm talking about all the elements of your service. I'm talking about the prayers, the scriptures, the songs, the announcements. Many of these things are just too long for people. You see, when someone's in church, they're captive. They can't go anywhere. The distractions are limited. But at home, when the phone's ringing and the laundry's buzzing and the kids need something, it's just so easy to get pulled away. And even if we don't have distractions, usually when we sit down to watch things online or watch them on TV, they're quick and to the point. I mean, there's few things that we can sit down and watch for an hour that aren't well done and action packed. So when our services drag on, when each element is longer than it needs to be, we're gonna lose people. Finally, the last thing that might be causing your church to struggle with online worship is that there's just no interaction. Think about it. There's very little that we do online that doesn't engage us or interact with us, right? When we're sitting down on the computer, we're usually clicking on something new every few minutes or we're chatting with someone or we're swapping tasks. Rarely do we just sit down in front of a computer screen and watch something for an hour. And yet that's exactly what we expect people to do with church online. When people were in person, they would sing, they would recite creeds, they would take notes. But these days, people are just squeezing in church when they can. They're so busy that they forget to download their message notes. Or when they're sitting alone by themselves, it's just awkward to sing out loud. The things that engaged and connected with them in person just don't translate online. And so unless we think of new and creative ways to engage with them, 
they're going to start feeling disconnected. And eventually, they're just going to disconnect. So what can you do? How can you turn things around and start doing this online church thing differently? Well, let me give you a few ideas. The first thing that you absolutely need to do is commit to online worship. Let's be honest, right? One of the big reasons that many churches are struggling online is because they're just biding their time until they can go back to in-person worship. It's why they haven't upgraded their audio system or purchased a decent video camera or learned how to use Facebook Live. They don't see any of these things as a worthy investment because they're thinking that in just a few weeks, they'll be heading back inside. Not only does this mindset show in the quality of their services, but they're also demonstrating that they're neglecting the fact that even when we do return to in-person services, there's a lot of people who aren't coming back. They're not going to return to church for a long time. And if we don't connect with them online, we're going to lose them. So the reality is your church has to commit to online worship, to do it right, to do it well, to figure out what resources you need and then invest in them. Because the good news is that if you do this, when you do return to in-person worship, not only will you have a thriving ministry there, you'll also have a thriving online ministry now. Another idea for how to improve your online worship services is to break up your service. What this means is that you need to plan your worship services around the presentation principle that every seven minutes, something significant needs to change. I mean, if you've ever watched an Apple keynote, one of the things that you'll notice is every seven minutes or less, they change something big, right? They go to a new presenter or they show a video or they do a demo. They mix things up so that they can constantly keep your attention. And the truth is that we should do this in our worship services. Instead of having a 20 or 30 minute sermon, break it up. Partway through the sermon, show a video. Or at the midpoint, sing a hymn that connects to the message. Maybe you go really crazy and you take the opener to your sermon and put it at the beginning of the service, introducing the theme and connecting everything else to it. That way, when you go to the different elements like music or announcements or videos, everybody can see how it connects to this big overall message and it breaks up the service. The point is to keep shifting grabbing people's attention in brand new ways. It's realizing that you don't have to replicate what you did in person. You can now be creative to reach people in this entirely new environment. And that actually leads into our final tip, which is to draw people into the service. We're beginning to realize that we can't necessarily do all the same practices we used to do in person, right? Singing, reciting creeds, corporate prayers, they just don't translate the same way online. It doesn't mean that we should take these things out. They're incredibly important parts of the service. But if they're not drawing people in like they used to, then we need to find new things that do. We can find ways to do this directly, like asking people to record parts of the service. Maybe they read a scripture or record an announcement or host the service that day. But by asking them to do this, we help them to feel like they're a part of what's going on. And then for those who aren't part of the service, we find other creative ways to connect them. Maybe we put out a poll or a survey during the service, or we put it out a few days early and reveal the results during the worship service on Sunday. Maybe we find ways to open up a chat feature or pause the service at one point and ask people to do something. For instance, you could send them a piece of string in the mail the week before, and then have this moment in the service where they pull it out, they interact with it, and it connects to your message. The exciting thing about this is that the options are limitless. I mean, we're in unprecedented times, and people realize this. They cut us some slack. They're willing to do things that are different because they realize that everything's different. I mean, let's be honest, right? In the end, for many of us, the reality of church online is not going away anytime soon. Even churches who've already decided to return have a huge contingent of people who aren't coming back soon and might not come back for a long time. And more to the point, there are millions of people out there searching for God. And the internet is the place where that's most likely to happen for them. So we must figure this out. We must find ways to change and adapt to this new realm of worship. Because the reality is God is giving us an amazing opportunity right now to grow the kingdom. And the question is, are we willing to adapt so that that can happen? And that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to go down below and click that thumbs up to say that you like the video. And then while you're down there, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you get these videos each and every week. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time and God bless.